Hello, I'm Natasha Foreman. Welcome to the Breaking Bread with Natasha podcast, where I share daily devotionals from my namesake blog. So you can listen on demand to spiritual messages inspired by God's love as expressed in the Bible and other religious texts. You can read along at breakingbreadwithnatasha.com or sit back and take in the word. Either way, I'm blessed to have you break bread with me. Without further delay, let's begin today's message. Well, hello there, Breaking Bread family. Thank you for joining me. This is Natasha Foreman, and it is an honor and privilege to be here with you today. Let's look at the book of Philippians, chapter 3, lines 13 and 14. And I'm going to, uh, translation I'm reading, I'm going to start where it says, One thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead. I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. Mm. Do we not study history to see the timeline to present, learn from those lessons, not to repeat the harmful ways, and deviate when we're heading toward destruction? It seems that many of us look back and dwell on the past because it distracts us from the present and the choices we're trying to avoid or are too prideful to request help. We wrongly think that our lives would be better if only we somehow orchestrate the duplication of the past and the present to right the wrongs and avoid the consequences. Hmm. Years ago, my friend Kenya forwarded a message to me that said, get past the past by choosing the right thoughts because God has victory and blessings in store for your future. And I add, that if you truly believe that God will never forsake you, never leave you, and never put more on you than you can handle, then you should always keep your eyes on the prize with images and sounds of victory flowing through your mind. It's like walk through the discomfort. (laughs) We will always be faced with experiences and situations of discomfort as long as we walk this earth in these bodies. We won't live up to what we were created to be, if we continue seeing ourselves as insignificantly human. Yes, we have limitations in this form, but we are not insignificant and inferior. Unlike animals and other create the creatures, we can create. All that we see in this modern world is by our design using God's power. Stop seeing yourself as small and worthless. It's what we do, how we respond, what we think, and what we say during moments of discomfort that we, that it's going to either deliver us or push us farther into the depths of confusion. And when we choose to be confined by our humanity, we're tormented by the things we create to align with this world. And we begin yearning for the simple things and moments from the past, thinking greatness was confined to an era we no longer live in. I must pause from time to time and close my eyes as I pray for God to make things right and to help me with solutions to issues that I created. Daily, I sit in silence in reflection and meditation, tuning out the rest of the world and focusing on God and Jesus and what they expect of me. And then I ask for counsel, direction, and intervention. It's not your will, but it's his will that makes all things possible. You have a choice and can access his power, but you are not omniscient, omnipotent, omnibenevolent, and omnipresent. So you alone don't control this world and all within it. The world is his idea just as you are his idea. He gives you reign to create within his idea, to steward what he gives you, and to create ideas to address human issues that arise, but you don't control or dictate to him. I must remind myself of this daily as the unexpected comes my way and I try to control things and expect God to fix them at my bequest on my time and terms. (laughs) Oh my goodness. And then when you think about our interactions with others, when it When it comes to your interactions with others, let God handle those who have mistreated you, lied to you, misled and deceived you, harmed you and betrayed you. Those are not your battles, they're his. 
just as God is working on you to help you see when and how you deviate, he does the same with them. He is the judge. He is the scale balancer. He is the healer. Leave his work to him. Leave the creations to the creator. When speaking or writing to other people and you are holding on to anger, sadness, or frustration, it's not wise to always share your first or even second thoughts. It's not wise to always react immediately when an undesirable situation arises. There must be a balanced approach to thought without impulsiveness or analysis paralysis. Remember that when what we say and, and do can't be erased or changed once the trigger's been pulled. It's not the quickness of our response, but the thoughtful intentionality of how we respond to circumstances that matter. What we say today impacts tomorrow. There is great power behind the words we cast into this world. We create with our words. You can create pain or pleasure, uplift or shame. Every time you tap into God's power, you are responsible and accountable for its use. You don't want your future to be haunted by the past because of your recklessness in your present. And you shouldn't want that for anyone you direct your words toward. I also want to remind you what I'm constantly reminding myself. Number one, don't let fear control you. It is information, but it also tells lies when it contradicts what God says, and it only has the power you give it. So you actually have the authority to dismiss or diffuse it. Number two, don't let the past haunt you. It is gone. So why are you attempting to recreate it in the present? Number three, don't let someone else's negative image of you dictate how you see yourself. Their vision is limited by their perception and bias. How does God see you? That should be your point of focus. Number four, understand who and what you are. Embrace this truth and live accordingly. Number five, when you understand your purpose, it's easier to see the past as a culmination of lessons and blessings that have laid layers to strengthen the foundation where you stand. The future is something to hope for and the present is something to revel in. Be, embrace, express, create, appreciate, help others do the same. Yes. Are you with me? <laughs> Let's pray on it. Father, I pray to you not only for myself, but for my brothers and sisters in Christ and for those who haven't grown to fully believe in you and your word. Father, you know that I have had my share of ups and downs over the days, weeks, months, and years. You know that each time I fall down, whether on my knees or on my face, with your help, I've always gotten back up. Father, as I walk through the forest of fear, I have to remain focused on what is in front of me and not behind me. For every lie that fear tries to magnify, remind me that I can create truth through you, speaking and then seeing it as you do. Help me to be free and to move forward, to heal, to grow, and to be released from feelings of guilt, shame, anger, and disappointment. In your glorious name, I pray. Amen. And with that family, I pray that you are blessed, that you see and embrace your blessings and that you are a blessing to others. I love you. Take care. Hi, family. If what I shared in today's message resonates with you, I hope you will share it with others. Feel free to leave positive comments and reviews on my site, breakingbreadwithnatasha.com, and through whichever podcast provider that you're listening to me. Each day, I work to be a better steward and servant. I hope you will join me in sharing God's love and truth and rebuking the enemy's lies. Now go out there and make today an awesome day. I love you all.